many times do I have to say that I am not a drama channel? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about trying to help you improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So welcome back to another amazing Patreon Q&A, where I let all of you ask me questions who are supporting the channel over on Patreon. So I started doing this and I did a video the other day just focused on one of the questions, but I wanted to do five more today. But anyways, I get flooded flooded with DMs and emails and messages and tweets and all sorts of stuff and comments in the in the uh, YouTube videos asking me like, oh, hey, can you do a video on this? Can you do a video on that? So if you would like me to answer some of your questions more specifically, go sign up on Patreon. You can do it for as little as a dollar. Some of the people's questions I'm reading today are paying $1 a month. Not a bad deal. But anyways, a little bit of house cleaning first is I want to talk to you about boundaries real quick. Some boundaries that I've set up. So back when my mental health was really, really bad, I was a people pleaser. I was a huge people pleaser. I was always trying to make everybody happy and it drove me insane. You might be able to relate to that. So a lot of you send me these messages or comments and telling me to make videos. So I, I don't wanna sound harsh, I don't wanna sound mean, I don't wanna get too sassy when I say this, but I hope you understand when I say, like, I am not your waiter, I am not here to just take orders. So like, if you would like me to answer your questions, go support the channel over on Patreon. It's that easy, you know what I mean? But like, I hope you learn something from that. If you're somebody who is a people pleaser, set up these boundaries. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is, if you're taking care of your mental health right, people are gonna think you're a douche. <laughs> but this is one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you. If you are taking care of your mental health right, you're going to upset some people because you gotta set boundaries. So like I said, don't mean to be mean, but I'm just letting you know. All right, so let's get started with the first question. So, the first question is, Hey Chris, I hope your day is going well. I've noticed that your latest video have talked a lot about celebrities, YouTube and otherwise. I was wondering if this is kind of the new format or if you were going to share some more videos about teaching about mental health from your own experiences and from what you've studied. Just curious. So like, I often debate on answering this question. I answer it a lot and I'm like, should I just quit answering this question? Um, but since uh, I'm supporting the channel over on Patreon, I, I'm gonna do, this. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna make a more in-depth video about more of like why my brain works the way it works. But um, something I say when I reply to people is like, I don't make videos about YouTubers. I don't know what you're talking about. I make videos about all of you. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to read some of my most recent videos about YouTubers and tell you the topics that they're actually about. So the Nerd City exposed the lies of Jake Paul. That's about why you don't lie. I talk about my experience of how I lied and it caused my own anxiety. Um, Jeffree Star calls out slack to this. I talk about how I used to complain about a bunch of stuff, but I never did anything about it. The Elvis the Alien one about Paul Joseph Watson. Um, that is because I'm a mental health advocate, so I brought up a topic in pop culture about how people don't know or understand depression and it's actually causing the stigma. This one about Bobby Burns, people are enabling him. A lot of you watching these videos are enablers, you don't realize it. Leafy is here, that's a good one too. I used to be one of the most selfish, self-centered people that you'll ever meet, and now I try not to do that. Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, that one is all about borderline personality disorder relationships. That can help a lot of people. That can help people with boundary setting, with, I talked a little bit about cognitive behavioral therapy in there. I also talked a lot about how to um, work with somebody uh, you know, um, who needs to start developing um, some better habits. The Chilled Chaos video, that one is about depression as a whole, and there's a few different topics that I touch on in that video that might help anybody in there, out there who has depression. This one about Garrett, stop running away from your problems. How many of you watching this video right now run away from your problems? A lot of stuff in there about that. This one, this one is really good. The Mark Zia one about an existential crisis. That one talks a lot about depression, how to deal with an existential crisis, as well as living in someone's shadow or doing things for other people and not what your true passion is. So anyways, I can do this all day. I can do this all day. So there are many people who understand what I'm doing. A lot of people don't, but I can sum it up with this amazing, amazing comment from Think Pink, which I just posted over on my Instagram. And it says this, 
I've been watching quite a few of your videos and I've seen a rare comment here or there asking you why you discuss YouTubers so much and wanted to add something to those that may think that. I like the correlation you make with mental health issues that parallel with issues everybody can relate to. In my humble opinion, I don't watch mental health videos. Truthfully, I find them boring or I don't relate to them. Not trying to be rude, but we all like different things. This is honestly the most unique way to get your topics out there well, while using examples from social media. I love your content, it's refreshing and different. I never write comments, but on the rare occasion. Thank you for the great videos. So, I make videos for people like Think Pink. I make videos for people who are bored, like you don't wanna go like, I am somebody who loves watching hour long lectures about neuroscience, but if I wrote in a title, hour long lecture about neuroscience. This is all about how the brain works. How many people would watch it? But if I could take something that you're already watching or something that's in pop culture, boom! I just tricked you into learning about your mental health. You're welcome. Second question. Um, I really enjoy your videos. I've learned a lot from them. One topic that comes to mind is, should I try to help out a coworker who is abusing drugs or alcohol? My husband and I work in television and unfortunately substance abuse is a big problem in this field. My husband had to fire an employee recently due to erratic behavior from drug use. Since my husband is a manager, he can't really go around accusing people of doing drugs, even when it's obvious. So do you have any advice for what we should do, if anything? Great question, great, great, great question. And there's a lot of industries, there's a lot of industries where substance abuse is really high. Bars, restaurants, you know, a whole bunch of industries where people like to party. So anyways, one of the first things that I would do is talk to HR, like you gotta talk to HR, and I would educate myself, if any of you are an employer or a manager, educate yourself about like, does your insurance cover, you know, um, treatment? You know, what options does it have? Is it good coverage? Whatever it is. So you can provide somebody with options. But the other thing is, is you gotta give the person an ultimatum. So my mom, my mom, for example, she didn't get sober until her job was threatened, okay? But there was an ultimatum there. Either get your act together or lose your job. So like, we don't want to just kick people out and say that these people who are abusing substances are lost causes because nobody is, but you have to set up boundaries with them and sometimes you have to give them an ultimatum in order for them to get help. So basically it's like, yo, you can keep your job if you go get help. That's what happened to my best friend. He's been clean over three years now. You know what I mean? So no, you don't gotta accuse everybody. The last thing I would say is do kind of like what the TSA does. Like just randomly drug test everybody so you're not specifically honing in on somebody, this is something you should talk to HR about, and then like drug test 50 people and you'll catch the people who are using. So this next question, she says, how to find the right therapist, when to uh, not if a therapist, uh, know if a therapist is bad, um, also couldn't find your email and I'll ask you something uh, privately. Well, okay, thanks. Uh, anyways, so yeah, like how to find the, uh, uh, the right therapist. So a few things. One of them is I was just talking to a friend and this might help some of you. Like. When shopping around for a therapist and trying to find the right one, like ask your friends, ask your friends who are in therapy and ask them like what their therapist is like, you know, does a therapist, you know, um, kind, of, kind of like do the things. Like, so I have a friend and he was looking for a therapist who is like well-educated, maybe kind of nerdy, um, you know, uses certain techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy and all that. So like get recommendations from other people. So same thing you would do for a restaurant. Like if I like Chinese food, I wanna find a good Chinese food restaurant, maybe I'll ask some friends like, hey, where's a good Chinese food restaurant? You know what I like, you know what I need. So that's something I would suggest is like ask around, ask some of your friends. You can also read reviews online. I'm just always iffy about reviews online because especially in mental health, I've seen people who wrote the most write the most ridiculous reviews just because we deal in mental health, I'll put it that way. But the other thing I'll say is like, don't stress. Don't stress about it. Like, shop around to different therapists. Go do one uh, therapy session, feel the person out. Like, you should, you should do like three sessions before you find a new one, but shop around. Like, I think one of the biggest fears people have is like cutting ties with a therapist. Listen, I'll tell you this because I tell people in recovery all the time who have sponsors, like listen, if you in the relationship with them and they get upset, that's on them, it's not on you, right? Like as mental health professionals, we sign up for that. I know, I know that not everybody is going to want to work with me. I have a certain style, I'm tough love, I'm wacky and I'm all active and stuff. Maybe some people don't like that. That's cool, no offense taken, you know what I mean? So 
I think it'll be easier for you to find a therapist if you don't worry so much about this huge burden that our brain tells us it is to find a new, a new therapist, okay? This next one is from, uh, do you think you're going to progress your knowledge in mental health any further? Like going back to school or getting licensed in an area of uh, mental health counseling? And if so, what did you want to study or get licensed to do? Great question. So for those of you who don't know, I am currently in school right now to get my CADC, that is a Certified Alcohol and Drug Counselor. I should hopefully have it by early next year. Like people are always asking me my credentials, I don't have any, a lot of it is self-education. So like, and I'll be honest with you, I might make a whole video about just my thoughts on college in general, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get some letters behind my name. I am skating through this class, and this isn't to sound cocky or anything, but I've done all this research on my own, so everything I've done so far, I'm in my third class for the CADC, and I already knew everything, like, so it's just been, whoop, skating right through. There's some cool stuff about ethics I've picked up and things like that. But yeah, I, I would say my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to get a PhD. To get a PhD in some kind of psychology, like that's what I would love to do. Like I am competitive. I always try to achieve the best. I, I try to, you know, bring myself to my best potential and I would love to get a PhD. I just don't like the idea of student debt. But other than that, like I, my table, you guys can't see it, it is cluttered with books about mental health. Like, here's another one. I'm gonna do a review on this soon. Um, I, I just love educating myself. So I'm constantly growing, constantly learning, especially just because mental health is so scientific. That's why I try to talk to you guys about neuroscience. There's new uh, findings all the time, all the time. So I am never going to stop learning. I never want to stop learning about mental health because the more we learn, the more we can help other people. Last question, if you've been diagnosed with a with a disorder and uh, yet every med you try turns you into a zombie, what do you do? So, another great question. So my experience with this is a, is a couple things. The only medication that really made me zombie-ish was uh, trazodone, um, which for those of you who don't know is a non-narcotic sleeping medication. That may, but it's supposed to knock you out. The problem was that it would stay in my system the next day. So the next day I'd be very groggy and zombie-ish and uh. Okay, when it comes to medications as a whole, all right, so a few things. One of them is just recognize it's gonna take, it could take anywhere from two to three weeks for some medications to actually you know, uh, have the right effects and have your body balance out, right? So like, keep that in mind. But this is why you always need to follow up with your doctor or psychiatrist or whoever it is and let them know. Say, hey, this is making me really groggy, it's making me really drowsy. I've gotten off, actually I've got off a different medication. A different, uh, I think it was a blood pressure medication. It just made me feel like I was in a fog all day long and I just stopped taking it. So this is why you gotta follow up with your doctor and tell them about what symptoms you're having and all of that because they might adjust the dosage or switch your medications. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make is that one medication they have a weird reaction to, like like drowsiness or whatever, and they just think that every single medication isn't gonna work. That is not true, okay? So, the other option you have, if your insurance covers it, or if you wanna pay out of pocket for you, there is genetic testing, okay? Like, the company I was working for, we had a genetics lab, and they gave me a free genetic test. All I did was swab my cheek, they sent it out to the lab, two weeks later, they gave me an entire list of different medications, and whether or not um, I would have a reaction to them. So, just think about that for a little bit. But my suggestion is keep following up with the doctor, switch, adjust medications. Like we have to be open and honest with doctors and find the right combination of medications. For example, and I need to make another video about this, I switched from Lexapro to Prozac recently and I've had a lot uh, a lot less symptoms um, or uh, side effects with Prozac than I did with Lexapro. So don't be afraid to change or adjust your meds, all right? But anyways, that's all I got. If you would like to help support the channel over on Patreon and get your questions answered, there's gonna be a link at the end of this video. Thank you everybody, and if any of you are on the Patreon and I didn't get to your question today, do not worry. Every single question is going to be answered. I just don't wanna make these hour-long videos, so don't you worry, but keep sending me more and more questions. There's a few questions in there that I think deserve a specific uh, dedicated video. And again, again, tough love, me setting up boundaries. I love all of you, but I am not your waiter, so do not just keep throwing suggestions at me for videos, okay? I only have so much time.
So if you would like to get your questions answered, just join Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. All right, but that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And here is an entire list of all the people supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to have your questions answered and join for as little as a dollar a month, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.